This week we try some beers we've never tried before. This is episode 105 of The Malting Hour. What's the half sound the hops got yeast and peace? This is the Malting Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Golick, joined always with Brandon Winninger. And it's the dynamic duo this week. What's going on, Brandon? Not much, man. How's your uh, your week been treating you so far? So far, so good. Uh, you know, um, random shitty weather, but other than that, it's been a pretty solid week. We had a very fun last, well, by the time this comes out, it's about almost uh, about a week ago, you know. It was a week ago. Uh, we had a fun Friday, uh, something that uh, we're still kind of cooking up with uh, the, 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 the brewery. If you follow us on social media, you know what we're talking about. Don't have too much information, but I think we can say safely that we have brewed a beer with Howard Street Brewing, and we're super stoked about it. Part of me, um, <clears throat> I, I, I almost wanted to email Chuck and be like, hey, just how, how's it going? Like, where, where are we at with this? Um, <clears throat> but then the other part of me was like, oh, no, what if he's not telling us anything? Because something went wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> Everything went to shit. Toby accidentally well. dumped it. <laughs> <laughs> Toby accidentally kegged the wrong beer. Oh, no. <laughs> that we have. He was pretty good. Uh, yeah, but that was that was so much fun. Uh, we're super excited about it. We did a pale ale. Uh, there is no name for it yet but uh, me clark and brandon got the chance to go to howard street uh, a couple fridays ago and uh man that was just a lot of fun uh big thanks to uh chuck and toby uh from howard street for inviting us uh to collab with them on this beer um brandon you actually came up with basically a recipe for this and then we decided to just say hey this is what we came up with now make a recipe with it correct Right. Yeah, and I think well, I, yeah. I, I originally started doing like, like I kind of I think I built it out in Beersmith, kind of going towards the IBUs that we wanted and like the color profile. Um, and the the big thing was like the bitterness is what we wanted yeah. to kind of dial in, and, and obviously the ABV. Like we didn't want it to be over five percent by much. Um, I didn't look. I'd have to check the Chuck's original recipe again to see if it was over five. I, I think it's just over five. Um, and I know Toby had said that uh, during the brewing process, we hit some higher numbers. Um, yes. I don't know what the, the final gravity was, um, the, like the post boil uh, gravity. I don't think we stuck around because he was like, I got this. Like, I'll, I'll handle it. Yeah, I don't think we got the actual original <laughs> gravity, but I'm going to email Chuck and follow up with him. Uh and see where we're at. Yeah, because he had said to us, he was like, um, I, I was talking to Toby. He's like, yeah, if you guys want to sit around and watch me do the cell count and this, this, and that. And I was like, uh, no. I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but I mean, yeah, I was like, yes, but also like, it's been a kind of a kind of a long day. Um, and- well, well, it was mainly a long day because it, it was a four. It was actually a four hour brew day, which was short for Toby because we actually helped him. Um, he actually had someone being able to help him, except for having to have Chuck jump in every now and then. <clears throat> Me, you, and, and Clark were able to. And that's even jump in shorter than some hand. of my homebrew days, too, man. No, for sure. I mean, and it was fun. But the other thing was was that uh, my intention was not to really drink any beers while we were there until maybe we were done. But right as we started mashing, we were offered a beer and. You know, we started drinking some beers over there, so it was not- <laughs> it's hard to turn down free beer. I, I yeah, and then we got a chance to you know pour ourselves some beer and and just hang out in in the actual uh, brewery and bar itself. It was a lot of fun, man. Uh, looking forward to that. We'll have more information on that beer. Uh, it will be a tap room only release when it comes out. Um, I'm not going to throw any dates out until we know for sure. Um, I do know that the, the aim for right now is mid March. So once we have that information, obviously we're gonna. Blow it up all over the place and anybody who's in the Chicagoland area, or if you feel like flying in from another city yeah. and state or country to come and try a beer we brewed, please now's do. your chance. Uh, <laughs> I did mention it to, uh, I saw Pat McHugh on 
this past Monday. Um, and Liz Lux, <clears throat> uh, some friends of ours, and mentioned it to them. And they are definitely interested in wanting to come to the event. So. Yeah, I've got some friends who don't really care about beer who want to come to the event. So it'll be fun. It was. Um, it, it, I was going to say, it was kind of funny. When I was talking to Pat, I brought it up to him. I started to tell him. And he's like, and typical Pat goes, oh, yeah, I was listening to the episode. And you guys mentioned something about brewing a beer somewhere. And I was like. I just love that, like, it's literally Monday at, like, 4 o'clock, and he's already listened to the entire episode, and he was yeah. like, he got the reference, he knew what I was talking about. I was like, oh, awesome, great. We do have uh, some dev- we do have some devoted listeners who listen as soon as it come out, uh, as, a, as the episode comes out, uh, which I always feel bad about when there are the few times that I do miss that Sunday night, Monday morning post, uh, because, you know, I'm a procrastinator, and sometimes I put episodes off for editing, and, uh, you know, it's the Super Bowl. <laughs> and and I, I come home and play the drums and forget to edit an episode and post it that that Monday morning or the Monday afternoon. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm super stoked, uh, and that's cool to hear that uh, he already knew. But uh, that's not what this episode's about. Brandon, you and I... Um, you know, to 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 be completely transparent with everybody, Brandon, we have we have episodes planned uh, for the future. We just forgot about filling in days as far as episodes in between. Uh, so, you know, last week was empty the fridge. And uh, now Brandon and I have come up with this cool idea. <laughs> we had we had it's, we had it's one idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we had one idea uh, in mind. It didn't work out. Uh, I just ended up going to the uh, beer in the wild in Park Ridge, and I put together a mixed three pack for us. Um, and they are uh, all local beers again, so that's kind of cool. But these are beers we've never had before, so that's kind of exciting. So it's beers that are new to you and me. Yep. You being Brandon, me being me. But if Brandon's saying it. It's you being me and me being Brandon. Everybody get that? Because we don't know if you've had these beers or not. We I'm, can't say I'm confused. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Let's 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 get into the first beer here. What are we drinking? Uh, you went and chose. So one of the beers that you chose was Phase 3 Brewing Company's Comic Cake. It's a West Coast style India Pale Ale. And that's all the can say. And that's all the description says when I went onto their site and untapped. Some of their other beers are like very much uh, heavily detailed. Uh, I feel like a lot of their adjuncts not. are like the, their stouts that have stuff like that. That's where we get a lot of the detail. That's true. Um, I almost got their strawberry milkshake Chantilly for us, but I also thought that that would be a bit much for a random night where we're not together with other people and just me and you and us trying to down 16 ounce cans of that. I mean, their Chantilly's are fantastic. They're basically milkshake IPAs, but that would have been much. So I I came across this and I like the design of the label. They they put a lot of hops on their labels. Um, And this one has like some pastel colors of, or almost like eighties pink and blue, and then like a beige, and I just like the design, and then I noticed West Coast uh, style IPA. So I was excited about that, and figured let's start there. Brandon, what are your first impressions? I was going to say the can. Way, it's, I don't know if oh, you sorry, said yeah. it. The can's giving me an Easter vibe. Mm. I did say pastels, and that is yeah. very Easter like. So. I mean, but the, the, like the pinks and blues um, I associate. I mean, I guess those pastel p- pinks and blues I associate. Um, uh, so I went in. I think first. <laughs> I don't know if you smelt it right after you poured it. I did not. I waited. Yeah, I did not. Um, definitely getting that that West Coast uh, West Coast like hop punch. I don't know what the hops that are, that they're using in this, but I'm getting that a good kick of hop, um, and that that kind of like maltiness on the back end, which I really enjoy because I think when I when I'm going to drink an IPA, I, I mean I love IPAs, but I feel like as I get older. I need to be in the mood for a specific beer, you know, because like if I go and drink, there's been nights where I'm like, oh, man, I just really want something to drink. It's been a rough day. Let's go get a stout. And I'll get like halfway through it. And I'm like, this just isn't hitting what I'm looking for. Um, And then I'll switch to like an IPA and I'm like, boom, IPA. And then there's some days where I'm like, I'll sip on an IPA and I'll be like, it's fucking bitter. Like, I don't want that right now. Um, my by no means means that I don't like it, but I'm just, it's just like literally 
in the moment type preferences. Uh, but West Coast, I feel like I can I can get down with pretty much any time. I can't drink a ton of them. Like this is going to be enough for me. Um, and I'm glad we're not doing an IPA episode because I think I would be burnt out. Um, and I think it'd like for sure just talking about beers kind of kills it. But um, I definitely love it. One thing I noticed, though, I f- it feels thin. Like mouthfeel wise. Yeah. Like I'm expecting like a maltier bite to this that I'm not getting. And that may be more true to the West Coast styles. It's been a while since I've had like an actual beer from the West Coast. Um, but there's, it's just something that I'm like, you know, I, I want to say chewiness. There's like that biscuity maltiness that, you know, um, is, is present, but overpowered by the hops. Like you taste the hops more than you do that, that maltiness, but you feel it in your mouth and I'm, I'm not feeling it. I don't know why. I'm, I'm kind of there with you. And I, I just looked up, uh, to see what a, What's a description of a, a West Coast IPA? And we're, this is actually from Firestone Walker. It says a West Coast West Coast IPAs are traditionally known for their bold hop aroma, high bitterness, citra, and citrus, and piney notes. They're typically brewed with higher amounts of hops in the boil kettle, which lead to high bitterness and a mid uh, palate flavor, hop flavor. Uh, I, I associate a maltiness, a slight maltiness or sweetness to West Coast IPAs. Not like sweet, sweet, but a nice balance of citrus, bitter, piney, and and, and malt. Uh, my first impression of this beer, when I took a whiff of it, um, I get, and I don't know, like, I feel like I've kind of been dealing with being a little sick this week. So let's just take my reviews of these beers uh, this week with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, the aroma reminds me of Flame Out from a brew day with hops and the wort. It smells like yep. freshly brewed beer to me. That's that's what I'm getting from this. And I, it is actually, I was kind of taken aback by it because I don't think of that for a West Coast IPA. I think of piney, citrus, um, almost like uh, herbal or floral aroma. And I didn't get that. It's not bad. I do like this uh, aroma. It just kind of, you know, caught me off guard. Then I took a sip and my first sip was, this tastes like a homebrew IPA that is not sweet. Uh, it's there's like a serialness to it, and, I, and it's not it's not a negative thing, and it's not an insult to this beer. But I'm getting like a lot of like cereal graininess to it, some citrus, a little bit of pine, um, a little bit of sweetness. I'm gonna take another sip. It's very light on the sweetness, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, when I say sweetness, I think I'm just associating that with like a bready cereal characteristic. It is not like any West Coast IPA I can think of. I I don't know how I feel about this beer. It's not bad, but I don't get it. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. I'm having, And it's also got a little haze to it. <clears throat> yeah. I'm having, you know, that was kind of my struggle with this was trying to find out like, where the West Coast is in this, because it's not reminiscent of anything I said. Uh, but when you gave that descriptor of like the flame out, I'm like, that's what that is. And I went back for, you know, another scent and another a whiff of the aroma. And yeah, totally. Like, and it doesn't go away. It's still there. Like, yeah. If you guys have ever been inside of a brew pub, a brewery, and there's like this strong, like, cereal ready. Yeah, exactly. That too. I was just, yeah, for those who aren't home brewers or you've gone to a brewery or a brew pub, there's like a cereal bready sweetness in the air with a little bit of bitterness. Sometimes people, I don't know how this comes to be, but say that hops smell like SpaghettiOs sometimes. It's so I've weird. I think they just relate that. to like pasta. I, I, I won't say who I've heard that from, my wife. Uh, but there's like this, I don't use SpaghettiO reference, uh, but I think it's like just because there's like this bready graininess in the air, some sweetness, and then like this piney citrus hop aroma in the air, but it's all very fresh. It doesn't, this doesn't come off as a finished beer to me. Maybe <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to go with. Yeah, I, I don't know what it needs more of. Um, I, I mean, to me personally, I would like to see more body. Um, I, I'd like it to be a little a little more maltier. And when I say maltier, have some of that malty sweetness. Um, Cause there's nothing counteracting with the hops. I don't feel it's, it's slightly sweet, but I feel yeah. like most 
the majority of the flavor profile is just coming from these hops, you know? Yeah. And then there's this like graininess to it, you know, like, I don't know. It, it feels like a test batch of beer that, uh, and no offense, phase three, because I do really like your beers, but we're being honest, uh, as always on the show. Um, it just feels like a test beer that is okay. And that maybe would be on tap for the brewers during a brew day. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> like but, it's not something like we're putting out for everybody to try. It's like, ah, this is just our it, beer. It immediately well. made me think of uh, when we went to Goose Island and they were talking about that, how they have like the test beers on and they'll, they'll keg them yeah. and like let people just drink them and throughout their shift. Yeah. That's, that's what this kind of comes across as I, Excuse me. I'm, I, it's making me burp. That's for sure. Um, it's it's weird. Um, I don't know what else to say about this beer. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't consider it a West Coast IPA uh, from what I have in my mind as West Coast IPAs. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a weird beer, man. I feel kind like if this was labeled as like a hoppy pale ale. Yeah. I could see that. I mean, just more just because of the body, how light the profile is. You know, you're getting a little bit of that cerealness, that biscuit biscuitiness, but like I'm not getting that thickness that like I expect in in like a you know a West Coast IPA. Yeah, like like you said, like it's it's lacking body and, and mouth. Feel. And it's hopped it very, is well. very thin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd like to know what hops they use. I mean, again, if I brewed this on my setup. I'd be like, ooh, it's a kind of a young beer. So, and I don't know how long this beer's been out. I will say this: there are no ratings uh, as of this recording on Untapped. So, this may have come out today. today? Uh, <laughs> I, I take that back. Actually, there are some. There are some. Twenty-three minutes ago, someone did start uh, checking in. But there's a hundred and sixty-five, hundred and sixty-eight check-ins as of right now of this recording, and it's six point two five percent ABV, which that's right in the IPA range. Uh, you know, as far as um, ABV and that I don't get, so that's good. It doesn't doesn't come off as a six and a quarter percent ABV beer. Um, but yeah, I just kind of uh, kind of bummed because I was really excited about seeing a West Coast IPA, um, and I thought that would be a great way to start this because we have two other very random beers we're gonna drink during this. I feel like this is something that again, if I brewed this on my setup and I had it on tap, and I said, "Oh, this is like a young beer," but I think if I was at a party and if I had a party in my house and you guys were all over and you guys were drinking it, you guys would be like, yeah, this is, this is good. It's good enough. You know, it's free beer at somebody's house. You know, would I go out and buy this again? Probably not. It would go down super easy. Um, and I think mm-hmm. at a party. Yeah. Like you said, free beer. Um, yeah. And what, so, the, and, and sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's not, it, it's not drinking like, uh, I mean, although I feel like I'm almost done with this, but like, because it drinks really oh, easy. Too. It, it doesn't have that that body. So I'm like, oh, I can just sip on it. Um, I was going to say, it, it doesn't drink like a 6% beer, 6.25, whatever it is. And then I'm like, I stopped for a second. I thought, I'm like, huh, I'm starting to feel something. Like, I ate light today. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, mm, I, I did not. I did not I'm eat light. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I keep going back to it because I, I keep searching for other, like, maybe nuance nuances in, in, in the flavors. And, like... I do like the hops in this. Like, I do like what we're getting in the hops, but that, like, fresh wort uh, graininess is just kind of, like, it's kind of off-putting. I got a lot of floaters, too. <clears throat> you guys, did you guys keg this before it was done? Phase three? Come on. I don't know. I'd like to talk to them about this beer just to see what... Uh, what their method was and what they used to do it yeah. and what yeast they used and all that other good totally stuff. Totally a ton uh, of floaters kind of at the idea. bottom. I do not. Oh, no. Yeah, I do have that. I have some weird like sediment like spiraling up now like it's from fucking the thing. You know what's so weird, though? Like when I put it to the light, it almost shimmers. And I was like, is there glitter in this beer? Um, Maybe that's West Coast glitter IPA. That's the. Oh, it's not cosmic cake. It's comic cake. Um, Damn it. But remember when we had that the the glitter beer I brought back from South Carolina? the care of wherever I, I went um i do and it took us all a long time to find the glitter but i feel like that's kind of <laughs> the position that i'm in i'm looking at it and i'm like oh there's the glitter but it's yeah <laughs> this is <laughs> this sediment. is it's there's a lot more sediment in there than i would have ever expected so 
yeah, very interesting. And actually, as you guys know, when you drink, especially if you drink IPAs and you kind of burp, I, I feel like, by the way, I have this like large burp waiting to come out. I'm trying to get it out in between when I'm talking and you're talking. <laughs> um, uh, I'm getting a lot of like strong hop flavor, which is good. Like I like that. I do. I feel like that's a sign also of a good IPA, um, especially a West Coast one. Like when I kind of do a little bit of a belch and it comes up and it's all like hop aroma and flavor. Like that's to me, that's that's really yeah. that's kind of tasty for a group. <laughs> gross. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Brandon, out of uh, let's see, uh, what are we going to rate this on? We're going to rate this on uh, mash tons okay. <laughs> because it reminds me of homebrew. How many out of five, how many mash tons are you giving this beer? Is it is it an igloo mash ton? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Igloo mash done for sure. Homemade. I'm going three. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Um, I think we've made uh, our point very clear on this beer. Not a bad beer. Just, I don't know. Feels unfinished. Feels like it's not done. <laughs> yeah, and and so like, and then seeing all of the like the sediment in there, like that's what's like. You know, because we've got a couple more beers to drink. I'm like, that's what's going to make me gassy and like <laughs> feeling bloated. <Yes. clears throat> so, man, when Can't we're done wait. with these episodes, especially during the week, like the next day at work, I tell everybody, stay away from me. I recorded a podcast last night. Like, <laughs> don't come in my area. Nobody sneak up behind me. You don't know what you're going to walk into. So, yeah, they're all very familiar with uh, what happens after I record. Uh, what do you think? Should we? I'm not, I'm not, I have a very little bit left of this. I think I'm just going to, yeah, I'm putting it to the side of this, putting it to the side as well. Um, do we want to, I know we're not fully at the half hour break. Should we jump into the next beer and then take a break after that? Cause we can probably sip on the last beer for a little bit. Sure. And talk about it. <laughs> All right. We got our next beer here. Uh, Brandon, do you want me to read this one or do you want me to, or you want to read this one? Go ahead. This is from our friends at alarmist. I've never seen this one before. It is the, Bomberger style Rausch beer, which is, uh, man, I'm going to try and read this. Here we go. Rausch beer is a classic smoked lager style uh, made famous in the town of Bomberg, Germany. All right, am I pronouncing that right? Bomberg? Sounds right to sure. me. Our versions have, <laughs> our versions uh, has rich Munich, applewood, and beechwood smoked, and dark wheat malts to create a smooth, rich, and incredibly drinkable lager. Brandon, you already opened yours up. What are you getting from the aroma and the uh, uh, what it looks like? Smoky. In a good way. I Sorry, I rushed that question. I felt the burp coming as I was reading it, and I let it out, and boy, oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely uh, some smokiness in the aroma. Um, I don't know what, like, the beech wood and, like, whatever that stuff is. Um, smells like, but applewood. Yeah, uh, but definitely that that smokiness is coming through. Um, it's like a smoky Whoa. sweet, smoky sweet. I haven't sipped Holy it yet. Cow. Yeah, yeah. I just I just cracked mine open. It's nice and smoky. In my brain, when I hear applewood, I go bacon. <laughs> this is like the smoke on a bacon. Yeah, like and it doesn't smell like bacon, but it smells like smoke that can come off bacon. Oh man, that smells so good. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Ooh, baby. That's tasty. Man, you know, I've had some bad smoked beers in my life, but local smoked beers, I've not had bad one. <laughs> I've not had bad one. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, oh, by the way, do you see my cool mug? Do you see what it, uh, as I blacked my mic, do you see what that says? Nope. Uh, it's, sorry, it's, it's a dry hop mug that I got for working um, uh, Friday Night Flights. Oh, nice. Joe gave this to us. Nice. Friend Joe from Dry Hop and uh, Crushed by Giants in Quarter. I uh, so I figured this would be great for Oh, well. Uh, sorry, man. This is, uh, what do you think about this one, Brandon? I enjoy it. Um, and again, and I think it's because in the past, like as you said, there's been smoked beers that I've had that have just been like god awful. Um, and it literally tastes like they're just putting like liquid smoke in there or something else. And, and it's terrible. And not in an off putting way because like, no, I'm not saying I've put I'm, in too much. Oh, sorry, I'm ahead. not saying this one tastes like they put liquid smoke. Oh, in gotcha. Okay, no, I'm okay. saying I've had ones that taste like it's literally just chucked full of liquid smoke and it just it's so off putting. This one, I feel like you're getting this in, in knowing um, alarmist. I feel like they wouldn't cheat and they would use like the traditional styles of malts. Um, Absolutely. 
and like I just I, I was looking I was looking up the style and it is a common style and like the the number one thing on there is Beechwood smoked Vienna type malt and that has to be what's giving it that smokiness. Man, that's fucking good. Like the idea of a smoked beer in my head is always just like, eh. but then when I have a good one, yeah, like we had at uh, Double Clutch, like yeah, that was a good smoked beer. Um, Which I tried to get uh, last weekend, and they did not have it. Uh, it was the one they did not have uh, on tap. I was kind of bummed about that because it's a smoked Hellas. Yeah, um, but yeah, this is this was pleasantly surprising. Um, I didn't think I was gonna not like it, but I'm surprised at actually how much I do like it. Yeah, I was I was looking at some other loggers, like I said. So we did West Coast style IPA. And I got this lager and I saw it was smoked. Plus Alarmist when was the last time we had an Alarmist beer on the show. And, you know, I'd like to go back. Oh, man, I still got these burps from that last beer just waiting to come out. Um, when I saw this, because I had missed out on the Roush beer, uh, the Hellas Roush beer from Double Clutch last weekend, because that was the one that sold out. I saw this and I wanted to try it very much so, because as you guys know, I... Finding out there are loggers that I like. It's the year 2023, a full year of me discovering that I was wrong about loggers. And this is definitely one of them that I like. Because it's like a it's like a Vienna style lager too. Like there's a nice sweetness to it. I love the smokiness to it. It's not too much. It is definitely a smoky beer. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's the right amount uh of smoke in there. And it's just ah oh, man, um, really tasty. Really, really tasty. Like this is a good cold weather lager. Also, it's only five percent ABV. Yeah, and it's it's got everything that I want in like a good lager, you know, yeah. like the body and everything is perfect. Um, and I'm getting a good mix of malt, hop, and smoke. Like, all yeah, I was just gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. Like, there's a nice hoppiness to it. Like, there's like I'm sure there's probably some noble hops in here. Uh, a little bit of fruitiness to it. Um, and, and as I keep drinking it, the smoke is more the aftertaste in my mouth. And now I just have like this nice. Yep. Like kind of Munich rich dark lager. beer, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, "Oh, there's the smoke again." You know, like the aftertaste in my mouth yep. is smoky. So I, I really like that. I, I like that 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 is the you know experience I'm having with this beer. I could I could drink these a lot, actually. Yeah, these are really good. Um, oh man, that's fantastic. Good job, Gary and the gang. Yeah, and I don't think this. It was around this time last year that we had talked to Gary for the first time. Or will, the only yes, um, <clears throat> yeah. it will not Very be able to have you back. Um, but yeah, I'm really like, I wish they would have had this then because that would have been awesome to have on tap. Um, but if we talk to him soon, I would love to try this on tap. Let's see how it tastes. It is on tap. I'm actually looking at what's on tap right now, and I'm kind of, man, kind of jealous that we're not there right now because uh, they also have a porter that's on tap. Uh, a Vienna style lager on tap. Then they have Jus d'Amour, which is Le Jus with strawberry and chocolate. Ooh. Which sounds very interesting, especially for Valentine's Day. And then Dream Le Jus, <laughs> which has orange zest and vanilla beans, which obviously is like a dreamsicle. Ooh. I might have to go there uh, before this week's over um, and try those. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, we should find out one day, like when Gary's actually going to be there and just go mm -hmm. and do like a gorilla recording. Just show up and drag Ooh, him downstairs yeah. and be like, you're talking to us. Even if we just bring the task cam and like. I was just going to say, yeah, bring the task cam talking, and surprise him. Yeah. <laughs> Let's grab some beers. You're talking with us now, Gary. Yeah. Um, man, I am just so impressed with this beer. Um, and maybe I'm more impressed with it because I, I was not a big fan of the last beer that we had. Yeah. Again, phase three. No harm. No foul, man. Not every beer is a winner. I love you guys. You guys make some great beers. I, I grab phase three beers. Um. Well, I haven't grabbed <laughs> I haven't grabbed in a while, but every phase three beer I've had has been pretty freaking great. We've we've had some phase three beers on here, especially the collaborations with uh, Goose Island. But uh, I remember during COVID is when I really kind of dug into phase three uh, beers, and I just was blown away by everything they had. So I thought I'd give that a try. But this from Alarmist, uh, this is probably one of the first Alarmist. This is the first Alarmist beer I've had this year, and I am happy about it. And I'm going to tell all my friends who like smoked beers about it. And, uh, boy, I would drink this again in a heartbeat. Yeah, me too. I, what I was going to say, um, kind of related to the last beer, I was really worried about that one being like a palate wrecker. 
IPA. And it wasn't. And I'm happy. You seem like you're trying to get some burps out as well. I am. Is that true? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> I'm happy that it wasn't a palate wrecker. So. Same here. And I, 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 my thought was going from, even if it was like a super hoppy West Coast IPA, that a smoked lager would be so opposite that it would still stand out um, compared to a West Coast IPA. Yeah. Um, what yeah. was Brand and I are dealing with some gas inside of our stomachs. These beers are just making us want to burp so much. Sorry, what, everybody. This is so, what's your episode. biggest takeaway from this? Um, let's see. The smoke is strong, but not overpowering. I really enjoy the sweetness of it, and that is also not overpowering. There is a nice, fruity, slightly bitter hoppiness to it, and it is very drinkable. If I had to choose out of five. Uh, staves of wood. This is a 4.45 staves of, staves of wood. 4.5 staves of wood. What about you, Brad? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm right with you. Like 4.4, 4.5. 4. Um, what I was just looking up really quick, I wanted to know what uh, Bomberg, Germany was known for. And it's known for their special beer. Their most famous, uh, the most famous of Bomberg's breweries is the historic smoked beer brewery, Schlinkerla. I I'm sure you're saying that, right? that completely wrong. I'm sure, um, but I, don't, I mean, I don't. <laughs> to our listeners in Germany, we apologize. I don't know if, if like you can get that here, but man, I'm really interested in trying some like a traditional beer from Bomberg. I mean, one day, Brandon, and hopefully sometime next year. One of these days, you and I are going to take a trip to Germany and just enjoy the hell out of German beers. I can't wait. As much as I love, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, and I've never done it. As much as I love American style beers, um, because obviously, you know, from America, and uh, yeah, bro, we're from America, everybody. Um, I have just fallen in love with just German beers. They're just so approachable, so drinkable, and. I've said this before, you know, breweries like Dovetail and and Double Clutch really for me in Metropolitan, those three breweries have really just kind of stuck it to me. And there's another one uh, in Michigan, uh, Seeds Brewing. Uh, yeah. That's a poof. Can't wait to go there again. All those like those 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 beers are approachable, and it's it's awesome to see them being done very well. Um, if they're not done well, I still like them because then maybe I just don't know what a, a, a good <laughs> German beer is, yeah. but they seem to all be doing very well. And um, it's also a great way for you to go out to a brewery with friends and, uh, you know, maybe friends who don't like IPAs or stouts or any other, you know, random styles like that uh, to be like, hey, let's go to this brewery. Um, all these beers are approachable for everybody. And then you have fun beers like this. Yep. Um, I think dovetail, like kind of like you said, like dovetail was, it's severely underrated, and like that's like a place, you know, that's my go to for like German style beers here now. I think, um, but now still my Vienna, still my favorite Vienna style lager. We got we got alarmists coming in with their smoked beer, and this is a tasty beer. Um, yeah, I, I do want remember- to. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I just I. I might go and grab uh, an actual four pack of this just to keep in the fridge because um, it's not a beer that like I want to like kick like sit back and drink a whole bunch. Um, I want to have this on hand to be like, oh man, I'm glad you're here. Let's let's, yeah, let's try this, this beer. Yeah. Today. I mean, I could sit I could sit there and drink two of these for sure. Two would be too much, or two would be just like the, like as I got through the second one, it would be like okay, that's that's enough. Yeah, but it's still such a drinkable beer. I'd love to share with people. Yeah, and I definitely – you couldn't keep doing this if you were doing an episode. I feel like, like no, this uh, is the perfect amount. If I did another one, I would be so like – my palate would be smoked. <laughs> if we do ever do, which we probably will, if we do a smoked beer episode, that's going to be rough. We need like water, crackers, mouthwash, hours in between each beer. Chicken wings. It's just, just enough to – yeah. Wings, smoked chicken wings. Yes. Brandon, I just, I just saw you take a sip from your cup. Look at how, like, look at your glass, and then look at how far I am on my glass. <laughs> I feel like I'm, 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 I'm killing this one a little bit more. But uh, this is a, 
you you said the same about four 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 five. Like I think that's that speaks volumes to especially for a smoked beer. Like this is just very good. Good job, Alarmist. Uh, fantastic beer. Um, I look forward to having some of these in my fridge to share with friends. Totally. I think this is probably a good time for us to take a little break. All right. everybody it's the oh, fuck i already forgot what i called it new to me new to you yeah <laughs> we've gone through two beers uh phase three's comic cake uh west coast style ipa and oh man i don't know the can in front of me bomberg roush beer from alarmist uh both beers you know you've already listened to it i don't need to recap that our next beer uh, I'll read this one. Uh, another local beer. This comes from Mars Community Brewing. Brandon, you actually suggested, and there was three types. I was this close to just buying all three for us and saying, let's just do this beer for the episode. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to try something something different. Uh, I'm glad you did. Brandon, this is pronounced Punchki, correct? Yes. Thank you. I'm Polish. I should know this. Uh, this is the Cream Puff Punchki Stout uh, from Mars Community Brewing Company. It is an imperial double milk stout at 7.5% ABV. It is a double milk stout with custard, vanilla cream, cocoa nibs, and lactose. Now, is there really custard and vanilla cream in this beer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, first it's, impressions. It is with custard. Cool, they put <laughs> all these fats in it. Great. Uh, there's a great head on it, uh, if that's the case. So swirling it around, when I first poured it, I didn't get a lot from it except for, ooh, nice roasty stout. That's This sounds, you know, this smells like a good stout. Then swirled it around, and I get like this chocolate, almost like cakey vanilla aroma from it. And like I, my brain says donut because, you know, I know that's what it's supposed to be. A punch key is like a donut. Um, but... I, I don't know, man. I, I haven't taken a sip. Uh, what are you getting on the aroma? Uh, same thing. I'm getting some like nice roastiness, some um, like pastry esque um, aromas, and I, I'm getting some vanilla, a little vanilla. Come on. It's also a, a cola uh, like darkness to it. One hundred percent. Yeah. So I took a sip. Uh, I'm gonna have you take a sip. I'm gonna tell you what I think about this sip. I'm so glad you found this on the website. Ooh. This is this is this is a donut beer with like I get I get all of it. I get all of it. Without it being super sweet and it being like these fake flavors, this is a well adjunct beer. I would have to agree with that. 
I always love <laughs> I love it when when it's you and me and like we're 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 going through the motions of the episode and we'll toss it back and forth to each other. You and I are both very <clears throat> guilty of it. But when I th- like if I say something like, "Man, this is this is so great." And you're like, "Yes, I agree." Yeah, well, it, it, part of me was like, well, no, like I know, I know, you were still processing it. But, but I, just, like, I love that. But like, I love that response. There's, there's not much more I can add. Like you, you nailed. No, I know. You nailed the descriptor on it. And <laughs> what I do like is it's not super thick. Um, no, no, it's got a nice like, not thin body to it, but it's easy drinking. It's like a medium, like thin, mediumish body. Very, very well balanced. Very well balanced. And this is. Oh, man, makes me wish I had a, a punch key to go with it. That's what the 33 pictures on untapped. And what I was right before we, we came back. Oh, there it is. Another burp. Uh, from, that was smoky bacon right there. Uh, we came back right before we came back from the break. I had something to say. And what I realized that all three of these beers have to be pretty fucking fresh because I'm going through like untapped and there aren't a lot of check-ins. Like I feel like uh, Wednesday was a great day to, to go, to go in and grab these beers, man. Like uh, the alarmist beer. Hold on, let me pull that up. How many check-ins are there on this? As of right now, 11, I'm number 12. Okay. Oh, there's a fire truck going on right there. now. Comic cakes got 168. This cream puff punch key. 33. So these are relatively fresh, fresh beers, man. Like this is probably the freshest I've got for beers for uh, an episode. They have three. (laughs) What? (laughs) They have three. (laughs) Sorry. They had two other versions. Uh, Shit. And I'm trying to find where. Is there a strawberry? The other ones. I think so. And I, I, I went with this one because I'm a sucker for, I mean, this is, this is like. This is uh, like a Boston Boston cream, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, and I, I I love I love those types of beers. Um, so that's why I chose this one. So I, I'm I'm very particular to this. And going back, there's like barely, oh, there was pistachio cream one that I almost got. Um, man, what is the other one? I, there was definitely a fruited one. Uh, cocoa nibs. Oh, maybe it was just. Oh no, the other one was double cho- double milk stout with cocoa nibs and lactose. That's the other one. Yeah. Pistachio, custard, and then just a double milk stout with coconut nibs. They, they bypassed, I think, the fruit ones. That's what I'm finding on Untapped right now. And honestly, like, I don't really care for fruit in my donuts either. I like fruit. Tony's rant. I like fruit as fruit. I want fruit as I'm eating fruit. That's all I want. Fruit and beer, sometimes, absolutely. Fruit in pastries, rarely. Unless it's a pie. There are certain pies I like that are have fruit in them. Fruit and chocolate, absolutely not. Fruit candy, sure. <laughs> Skittles, not so much. Starburst, absolutely. Jolly Ranchers, 100%. But uh, I, 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 man, whew, I am regretting maybe not doing the entire episode on these beers just based on this one. This, this is hitting everything that I was expecting and wanted from this beer. Yeah, I definitely feel like I want to go back and try those other ones just to see how they compare to this one because this one has done super well. Um, and then the idea of, like, I, I'd be curious to know, like, did you put custard in there or custard flavoring? Um, yeah, like, it's not like oily. How is the custard in there? No, not at all. It's not oily. It's super well balanced. Um, and I'm I'm drinking this pretty quick, even though it's like 7.5%. So am I. Uh, but it is—it's just so good. I'm trying to kind of warm it it's up. It's fantastic, my hands man. A little bit. Um, so I had this out the entire time while we were recording. So I figured I went from—I took all three out at the same time. I went West Coast IPA first, obviously. Smoke beer, I figured would be okay. Um, you know, a little warmer. And this one is like perfect room temperature for me. This beer, god damn. I don't know how long. I think they've been doing this for a little bit because there's some barrel age variants that I can see as well Ooh. on Untapped. Uh, which oof, I mean, I don't even know if you need to barrel age it. I mean, I'm sure it's fun. The yeah, barrel aged with uh, pistachio and vanilla. Ooh, there you go. Barrel aged with raspberry. Barrel aged with uh, strawberry. So, and those are nine percent. So those are just two percent higher than this actual beer. This beer encompasses like 
how to do a well done adjunct flavored beer. Like it's hitting everything without it being too sweet or overpowering. I can still taste the beer. It's, it's nice and roasty, but the chocolate, the vanilla and the creaminess, and even like there's a bit of donut in there, man. There's a bit of cake in there. It's it's so good. Yeah. There's this cakiness like kind of at the end that just kind of closes it all out and brings it all together that I'm, that I'm getting. So I, um, if I find my way back to beer on the wall this weekend or before the week's over, which would be two days before, well, before, eh, before this episode, <laughs> if I see the other two there, uh, if I go over there, man, I'll grab them and uh, maybe we'll just uh, either drink them together or we'll do uh, quick after the final pours with these. Cause uh, I, I got to try them. I got to try the other versions. Yeah. And these are um, really appropriate for this time of year. Yesterday, as we are recording, this was fat Tuesday, Woo. <clears throat> which makes punch keys a thing and which is weird because i feel like i didn't really know what punch keys were or that they were a thing i think when i started dating becca and like she was like oh it's fat tuesday we gotta get punch keys i'm like what she's like oh there's- are they pronounced punch keys punch keys punch keys punch keys whatever but she was like living in chicago we should know it with our very large polish population yeah we apologize everybody but she was very much like oh you gotta get these and i had them and i was like Looks like a really good donut. <laughs> She's like, it's not a donut. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's not. Um, we are, I mean, it is, but it's not. <clears throat> we are lucky to live uh, in a neighborhood where we can get them regularly. Um, we actually, I went yesterday on my lunch break and picked up uh, six different ones from Delightful Pastries uh, that they they had their panchkis there. And yeah, I, I love them. Like. What kind of what kind of punch keys did you get? So we got a chocolate with custard, which yeah. kind of <laughs> almost like yeah. this. Um, it's my favorite combo, man. Like Eclairs, Boston, uh, a Boston cream donuts, like chocolate cake, cream vanilla. I, I'm I'm very basic. That that just like if someone brings in like the shittiest Dunkin' Donuts uh, mixed, you know, uh, case to work. And there is a Boston cream. I'm going for that and I won't touch anything else except for an old fashioned, which I do enjoy as well. Yeah, I think that's I think I feel like Boston cream is Becca's favorite as well. Um, but that was the only chocolate one we had. It's the only chocolate one they really had. They had a, a a Jameson one that we've gotten in the past. We've gotten so they have like what? vodka and lemon like infused. What? Ones. Yeah. And we've had the booze ones in the, in the past, and they're just like not our favorite. I, I, we I do enjoy the the fruited ones, so I got apricot and passion fruit. Ooh. Oh, see those two apricot and passion fruit. I I I'd sign up for that. I feel like it's the the, the regular like just like jelly and a donut. I'm not into like not grape raspberry. or raspberry. You got raspberry, but man. A- <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but like apricot and passion fruit. Oh man, that's not like I'd probably split a passion fruit one, but the apricot one, man, I might house that one myself. Yeah, the apricot one I, I got because um, when my mom used to always make kolachkis, she would always make mm-hmm. apricot was one of the ones she would always make, and that was the one that I always loved. Um, oh man, yeah, uh, kolaches are the best, and and the homemade recipe is awesome. My dad's got one as well. Yeah, my mom. There's so when she passed, like sister went through like all of her recipes, and there was two kolachki recipes in there, and I still don't know which one she used. The first year, I think we've talked. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah, and the first year I made one, I was like, I Becca was like, you nailed it, knocked it out of the park. And then I made them not this past year, the year before. And they were just weird. Um, so I didn't attempt it this year. I was kind of kind of upset with last year's turnout. But um, yeah. Brandon, you're one of the best. You and Becca both are one of the best like friends that I have who are great cooks and bakers. And and my other friends, you know, you know, Dan and Becky. Uh, Becky is a fan. Like when they come over, Becky and I cook. But she's also a phenomenal baker. I feel very blessed that i have you guys in my life when you guys make stuff that you share stuff because you're we haven't even like had your jerky on a show yet like you make the best jerky other than i will say this the kirkland turkey jerky that i got recently from costco is pretty fucking good man yeah i'll have to share some of that with you but your jerk jerky is phenomenal so i if you ever make kolachkis again let me know i'd be happy to 
to, to sample them. For you. Yeah. And what I forgot to do, I was actually going to give you some ice cream today, but I, I ran what? out of time. I tried to get some. <laughs> yes. Cause I still have some of that Butterfinger ice cream left. I was going to give you some of that. Oh, I mean, we got to do like, we do have to do uh, just a food episode at, at, at some point. Uh, and by the way, I still have random beers for you here that I keep forgetting about uh, an old Irving beer. And, um, a backwoods bastard French toast beer. And that's what, when I asked you if you're coming over tonight to do this. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to drop the beers off. I'm like, oh, I was going to also say, reminder, bring those beers you said you had for me. So, yeah, it's, it will get those to fine, you fine. very soon. <laughs> They're still here in the fridge, baby. Um, but yeah, like this, this beer is really, really great, man. Um, this is one that I'm happy that it's the temperature that it's at. It's it's a little cooler than warm. Uh, the cooler than warm, cooler than uh, room temperature. You're you're much further than than I am. I'm 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 sipping on this one and, and fully enjoying it. This I'm is really like sad when it's gone. The reverse, like the last beer, you kind of went through pretty quick. Yeah. I still have. I was I, was, I loved it. And I was like, oh, I love this. I'm gonna slam it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like I wanna I'm gonna savor this for the rest of the the evening before I go to bed. It's fantastic. So Brandon, here it goes. How many punch keys? Are you going to give this beer? Uh, I'm going four and a half. I like that. I like that. I am going to go with. I'm going four because. God, it's just a really well done beer. And I'm a sucker for vanilla and I'm a sucker for custard. I'm a sucker for chocolate. Like. This is like four eight, four eight five, Ooh, maybe okay. even four nine. I'm gonna go four eight with this. So when I check it in, it's probably gonna be a four seven five. This is really close to being like a perfectly adjuncted stout for me because, like I said, it's not super sweet. I taste everything in it. It's not even barrel aged. It's not thick. The body is thin to medium, maybe leaning more towards the the medium body side. Uh, there's still the roastiness to it. And what is it like? Seven percent alcohol. Like, seven and a half, I think. Uh, no, seven. It's it's seven. seven okay. Well, yes. Seven yeah, and seven percent. So, like, what? I could. Oh, the can it says seven point five. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the. I'm sorry. I was looking at the other uh, versions. It is seven and a half percent. So I could thoroughly, like, drink one cold, like enjoy it like that, because I'm sure I'd get like just a nice like milk stout out of it. And then let another one sit out and warm up so that I can sip on it. Like, but that would be it. That would be it for the night. Like two beers like this. Cause like I said, it's not sweet. It's not over the top. It is quite possibly one of the best adjuncted beers I've ever had right up there with uh, goose Island phase three, where it tasted like chocolate, strawberry, fucking was it ice cream cake or something. Oh, yeah. I, I forget what it was where I was like, Oh my God. Is this that is the like a bird? Oh, like, bird. Yeah, I forget which one it is. It's it's the Goose Island one, I think. Yeah. That was like one of the best beers. This, I will say right now, on this episode, I don't think we've done it yet. We're here in February. Congratulations, Mars. You have officially made it as a contender for my Maltese of 2023 with the Cream Puff Punchki Stout. This is like, this is blowing my mind, man. The, the aftertaste in my mouth is like creamy vanilla. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like I had a donut. It's so good. Yeah, I can't. Um, I can't say people are going to make fun. Of, like Clark and Dan might make fun of me for how much I'm like gushing over this beer. Yeah, and again, like I, there's nothing I can say uh, bad about this. Um, everything is just super well done, um, and it, it just makes me believe that if they did this one this well, that the other ones have to be just equally as good. I, I can't wait to try the pistachio one. I want to know how well the oh, pistachio yeah. comes through. I still have uh, a milk pistachio from uh, Dry Hop and Hop Pusher in my my fridge from uh, this past December. So mm. I haven't even cracked that open yet. Mm. Mm. Let's we'll uh, crack that open sometime. I'm I'm waiting for the right moment. I'm not going to drink that on my own. I love it. I could drink it on my own, but I, I love sharing that beer. What's the EBV? Well, Brandon, uh, it's a good question. I, I think it's low. I feel like it's seven. Okay. Because it's not like a big, like rich stout, it, but it, it, the pistachio is fantastic, and it's such a good stout. The first time uh, Clark and I had it, we had the donuts with it at Dry Hop. It oh, was nice! So much fun. 
Nice. Um, that was our, uh, which we've talked about before, our first plop day. And then we went to Beguile and then we got tickets for a prop day. Anyway, uh, overall, if I'm going to rate these uh, for this episode out of beers, you know, I feel like it's unfair that this beer from Mars, the, the, the Punchki uh, Stout, is up against the Alarmist uh, Bomberg Rush style lager because that beer should, could easily just be like they're tied. They're tied for me. Yeah, they're tied for me. So good, even though like I, I didn't give the same rating, but those beers are fantastic. But if I'm giving the rating, it's in backwards. It's in reverse order. Three, two, one. We're going to go Mars, Alarmist, then phase three. Mars, Alarmist. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Same boat. <laughs> I'm like, what did you say? Uh, but yes. What did he just say? Yeah, I I feel like it's just the, the the we did a good order. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if if that um, IPA would have been in any other order, it would have been worse. I feel like. Yeah, actually, if that IPA was true to what we consider a West Coast IPA, I think we would have just had across the board like a tie. Yeah. Yeah, but I but the beer that it was being what it was when we had it was perfect. If we would have done it, yeah, same, absolutely. Like if we would have done the smoked beer first, and then I when it was went to that, like I feel like I would have gotten nothing. <laughs> like it would have yeah. been just we would have been like that's a one. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, Brandon, the next time we do this, um, I'm gonna leave it up to you, man. You grab three. I, I like this. I think we should uh, consider doing this more often. Of just. Uh, grabbing some random beers and, and and grabbing some stuff maybe that we don't think we've ever had and we'll just drink them, man. Okay. And that's what the, the show's about. Drinking I'm, random beers. It's so much fun. That. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. We hope we gave you some insight and some new beers uh, from us. And if you're in the Chicagoland area or any places that these breweries distribute, go ahead and find all of these. Um, they're fantastic. Um, I mean, again, the phase three one, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are going to really like that beer. You know, it's not a bad beer. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. What was the overall check in on that one? A hundred and. No, no, I meant like, oh, <clears throat> did it show the average already? 3.82 so far. Okay. So there's people that like it. Let me refresh. I'm refreshing the page right now. There's now 174 check ins, uh, and it's 3.82. So it's not, not bad. No. Um, you know, uh, I'm seeing some fours, some three and a quarters, uh, another three and a quarter, a four. I mean, you know, it's again, I, I actually. I'll plan on revisiting this beer uh, maybe next year or sometime in the near future uh, and give it another try. I, I'm not writing it, writing it off at all. It's just, you know, for me tonight wasn't my wasn't my jam. This this cream puff punchki stout was. Yeah, more of that. I will take yeah, more, more of that, that anytime. Um, Absolutely. Um, Brandon, got anything else you want to say? <clears throat> no, man. I just thank you for picking up the beers. And again, thanks for folks for listening while we ramble on about ramble, random beers and random other things. Uh, truly appreciate that. Absolutely. And we've got some, uh, like we said, Howard Street Beer uh, collaboration coming up soon. We'll let you guys know about that. And we've got some other breweries coming on the show soon and some other stuff in store. Uh, you know, the, the new year is always tough for everybody to get together. Clark's busy, by the way. Technically, as we're recording this, it's Clark's birthday. So happy birthday, Clark. And, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll just keep doing what we're doing, guys. Thanks for listening. We really do appreciate it. We love all you guys. Keep uh, sharing liking rating if you haven't subscribed what, what are you doing just subscribe you keep listening just subscribe already damn it jeez brandon i love you man love you too bud we'll see you guys next week have a good one bye Thank you. this has been the malting hour be sure to follow us on all social media by searching the malting hour and at the malting hour.com you can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmw81, on Twitter bdub81, and on Untapped as bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. 
Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.